Hey guys, how you doing? So what is tech debt? Tech debt is when companies hire uh, junior developers or $10 a course developers and the code that they write is just a disaster. That's tech debt. Uh, yeah, because what they do is they write really poor code, bad code. And what's bad code? Oh, we got a couple of dogs here. Bad code is code that's very hard to maintain. It's unintelligible. It's hard to update. That's bad code. You don't want to find yourself with a piece of software that has a bunch of bad code or as some nerds would call it, the tech debt. So if you're a developer, you should learn to write simple code, easy to understand code. The simpler, the better. If you've written a bunch of code and it's complex and hard to understand, you gotta refactor that stuff. You gotta refactor that junk code. Refactoring is a process of code cleanup. I link below to books on refactoring for JavaScript and Java, but the universal principles. Don't write junk code and accumulate tech debt for the company you're working for. Now, some um, less than moral people and unwise people may say, well, that's good. If I write a bunch of complex code that's hard to maintain and understand, then I protect my job. No, you won't because code reviewers will eventually catch you and say, look at this, this guy Johnny or this guy Sally has written a bunch of junk code. We're gonna fire their asses. So don't write bad code. Always come into any job with the spirit of service, with the spirit of I'm here to try and help this company. I'm here, I'm being paid, and I'm being paid to do a particular job that I agreed to terms of salary and what was the, the parameters of the job, my vacation days and so on. Or if you're a freelancer, I agree to the terms of the contract. So you should work in good faith and work to want to deliver quality code uh, for your clients or for your, the, your boss or your, the people around you. I'm telling you, in the medium term and the long term and probably the short term, this is going to be hugely beneficial to your career because eventually you will develop a good reputation. And I've been saying for years now, reputation is the number one asset that you can develop. Good reputation is more important than anything else because you could go to zero with your uh, net worth. But if you have a good reputation, you're going to be able to get business, get work, get jobs like this, and you'll be able to come back quick. But if you have a bad reputation, Nobody's going to want to work with you, and you're going to have a hard time getting along with people so and making money. So yeah, tech debt is this really poorly structured, poorly written code, poorly architected systems. And a lot of times the tech debt is a result of having poorly trained developers at the business. So don't be one of these uh, $10 a course tech debt generating small level coder, become a superstar, write simple code, keep it uh, understandable, updatable, refactor your code on a regular basis, and you're gonna do well. Now, if you're a business owner or a startup owner, you understand what you have to do here, right? You gotta, when you're vetting your developers, instead of testing for stupid things like algorithms and data structures, which is gonna do nothing for you, unless, you're building a search engine or a gaming engine or something. But if you're developing web apps or business apps, um, that's not what you want to test for. You want to look into uh, how clean and simple the code is that they write, how organized they are, how well they communicate, whether they seem like good people. One of the reasons you see so much work in, the, uh, in legacy systems, meaning older systems, web apps, websites created 15 years ago, 20 years ago. You see so much work updating them. One of the reasons you see this is because there's ton, there is a ton of tech debt in those systems. You see, um, in the 90s when software development exploded and people's, you know, and the need for developers exploded, the whole community wasn't exactly sure 
what the best practices should be in software development. We, we, we really didn't because uh, during the 90s and into the early 2000s, the complexity of systems just increased quite a bit. You know, prior to the 90s and 80s, it was all command line, green screen type of applications for the most part. So with Windows 3 and Mac OS, um, to a lesser extent, OS 2, when you start seeing visual type of development and, and then personal computers, when people are moving away from mainframe, the whole way in which we had to develop applications changed. And so in the early days, in the first 10 years or so of development, the community, the development community, the coder community, the software community was still trying to figure out how to do it well. So as a result of those early days, we see a lot of tech debt. We see a lot of poorly written code. So in big organizations that have leveraged a lot of Java and C Sharp and so on, man, there's so much work to do because they got these huge behemoths in terms of software that have to be maintained and updated and because of the poorly structured nature of these, uh, these systems, it creates a lot of extra work. Now, in terms of small business development, small websites, there's also a lot of tech debt there because a lot of apps were created with older technologies. Again, created in a time when we weren't exactly sure how and what we were going to build and how we were going to build them, rather. So that's it. So that's tech debt. Don't be a terrible developer who writes messy, crappy code. Be a superstar. You'll be rewarded for it, trust me. And if you're worried about development jobs and AI, trust me, there's so much code out there that has to be maintained, which was based on uh, less than ideal uh, ways of development. And you'll be fine. <laughs>